Hey YouTube, what's going on? This is iTalk. That's a double chunk chocolate cookie. Here and in today's video, we have a brand new video. So back in late 2021, my $30,000 Fortnite account was banned. After that happened, I've been on and off collecting Fortnite cosmetics as I don't really want to get banned again and lose all of that money. And it would also be a shame to lose all that progress on the account as well. With the current locker UI looking and feeling as bad as it is, where I can't even access what I purchased, I've decided to just not really pursue buying everything in the game anymore. I'm deciding to not collect everything anymore. However, I did start a new collection, and as of August 2024, it's worth about $30,000. But it's not Fortnite, it's not Overwatch 2, it's not in any sort of game I collect cosmetics for, it's actually physical. And today I want to talk about my new collection that I've been building on and off for about five years, but recently I've been ramping up my efforts to make this as complete as possible. I'm talking about this. It may look like a harmless bagel toaster, but inside is a deadly donut. The PS1 was my first console growing up, and Crash Bandicoot was the first video game I've ever played when I was three years old. The PlayStation is my favorite console of all time as it has some insanely fun games on it, but it also has the most nostalgia for me personally. My physical collection is PS1 games and I also dabble in PS2 as well, but it's mostly PS1 and that's what we're going to be focusing on today. My main goal with this collection is to collect every single PS1 game for North America release, not European and not Japanese. I plan on making multiple videos covering my collection as well as how to collect for physical games. If this video does well, maybe we can make a series here on the main channel, but if not, it will be posted on the iTalk2 channel anyway, so no worries about that. All the history I'm going to be talking about with the PS1 and PS2 is only covering the NTSU-C versions, not the PAL and not the NTSU-J. Hey, plumber boy, mustache man, your worst nightmare has arrived. I'm gonna have to ask you to leave. You're hurting my elbow. Is that Italian? The PlayStation 1 was released in America in September 1995. The first set of games for the console were in these sort of long box cases. That's what collectors and gamers nowadays call them. They were large, bulky, and overall not a very fun thing to collect for, especially for the time that they were released. They came in three styles, plastic, flat, and rigid. Plastic was just larger jewel cases, the same cases that would be used for the majority of the PS1's lifespan. Flat were cardboard boxes that usually included a piece of foam in there to keep the manual and disc tight and not fumble around everywhere. However, the foam would be tossed from most that purchased this sort of case, so finding a flat case with the foam is actually pretty rare, but I don't personally consider that to be complete in box or anything like that if it doesn't come with the foam. Rigid was a combination of flat and plastic, and that's basically the history of long box games for the PS1 as a whole. As I said, they weren't super great to collect back then, mostly because they took up a lot more space, and they were usually mostly cardboard and plastic anyway, so I'd assume a lot of people threw away their cases. Very similarly to how Game Boy game cases are a lot harder to come by now, because the boxes were usually tossed, and I know I did that for all of my games. After a year of this production with the long boxes, they quickly went to the jewel cases. These cases were used for the rest of the PlayStation's lifespan, so that's what most of the collection resides in. These games come in a jewel case, very common to see with music CDs, as they are made of plastic, and they have hinges to hold the game manual in, and they have a spot to hold the disc in, as well as having a back. Now, if games had more than one disc, you would get the double jewel case, or dual cases as most collectors call them. This is a bulkier version of the jewel case. It has two spines, and it would mostly just hold in extra discs, as some games actually required them. However, some of them only hold one disc in them, which is kind of confusing. However, I think most likely the reason as to why there are dual cases for single disc games is that the manual would be larger or there would be multiple manuals and all of that would not fit in a simple jewel case. These cases could also sometimes hold up to four discs and two manuals at different times. There are two different versions of the PS1 games. There is Black Label and then there's Greatest Hits. 
Black Label is the first run of the games. Kind of similar to like first edition in Yu-Gi-Oh or Pokemon if you want to look at it that way. Greatest Hits or Green Label is for games that reached 150,000 sales of their Black Label version and then they would get redistributed for a cheaper price as it was the second run of the game. If PlayStation games were selling for $50 each retail, then a Greatest Hits label version would maybe sell for about $25 to $30 retail. That's the general consensus for those sorts of games. My goal with my collection is to acquire the entire PS1 library, complete in box, black label, as well as the Greatest Hits versions as well. Now, what does CIB mean? Well, CIB stands for complete in box. Now, before I even get into it, People have different sorts of meanings when it comes to CIB. CIB, to me at least, is the manual for the game, the game, and the back art for the game in its case. There are also something called registration cards, or reg cards for short, and these are located in the manual for you to fill out to mail back to the company that made the game. These, in my opinion, do not make the game CIB for two main reasons. Number one, they don't add much to the game anyway. And two, not every PS1 game had them anyway, and I don't really feel like researching and figuring out which games came with them or not. Now I can talk about the price ranges for most of these games. PlayStation 1 games price range from $5 to over $8,000. The PS1 games that are dirt cheap are the heavily manufactured sports titles that get outdated year after year. This happens with every other console as well. You will notice that like Maddens go for really cheap after their year is up. This happens with PS1 games as well. And you also got to think about how like newer games have updated rosters, better graphics, better gameplay, you name it. Now, the most expensive PS1 game of all time is a rail shooter title called Elemental Gear Bolt. By itself, the game actually only goes for about $300, but if you were fortunate enough to get the promotional material for it, it's worth about $8,000. Now, this is something where I just find owning the game itself is enough to complete the collection for me. Again, people will have different opinions on what is a complete inbox title and what isn't. Specific circumstances like that, the registration cards, and even something like the Rayman 2 Watch Edition that comes with a physical watch. Yeah, they would be fun to collect for sure, but they aren't something I'm necessarily caring about as much. So collecting PS1 games is definitely a fun time, especially learning about prices and whatnot. The best way I track my prices is through pricecharting.com. This is not a sponsored video, I promise you. It's not a perfect site by any stretch, but it helps illustrate the pricing market by taking statistics from purchases from eBay and other sites to make a good guess as to what each game is worth. They give you prices for games if you have just the disc or just the manual, complete, new, all that sort of stuff. Now, new is an interesting version of a game that I'm not super into collecting, but I'll talk about it here anyway. New is essentially never opened, still has the plastic on it, the seals on the top, and have the price tags and everything that the store was selling it for. They go exceptionally high. And as for all PS1 games are now over 20 years old minimum, and some of them are almost 30 years old at this point, that makes sense as to why new versions of these games go for so much more than your basic ones that are opened and everything like that. One of the things I really like about collecting all these PS1 games as well is that I feel like they do have value that will increase and decrease over time. The thing with like Fortnite and Overwatch and all these other games that have digital cosmetics that you can collect is that there's no marketplace for these things. There's no value to your skins. I don't really like collecting something where I don't think I'm getting something back out of it. Now, that's not to say I view all Fortnite skins as like monetary value that I could sell off to people. I don't think that at all. I'm just saying it would be more fun for me personally if cosmetics had that sort of flair to them. Because I know Roblox does that. I know Roblox has like rare and unique stuff in the game that you have to pay real money for. And with PS1 games, you might buy a game that's cheap now and then it'll skyrocket in price later on due to a lot of different factors. And that's why I think collecting for the PS1, and I, again, I also dabble in PS2, is just so fun to me. There's so much that goes into game collecting, and I want to start making videos dissecting my collection. And I'm curious to know, do you guys want more content about this? 
depending on how well this video does, maybe I'll cover the collection on the main channel, but I think this is most likely going to just be covered over on my second channel. So if you haven't already subscribed to iTalk2 as I cover the Overwatch 2 item shop every Tuesday, I also cover the Fortnite copyrighted emotes. And again, I am going to be covering my PS1 collection and just talk about collecting in general as I have a lot of passion for this sort of topic. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, let me know with a like and subscribe to the channel for brand new. Use code iTalk in the Fortnite item shop if you'd like to support me. And what do you guys think? Should I make this a series on the main channel or maybe I'll just do it on the second channel? Thank you guys so much for watching and I will catch you all later. See ya.